The next question. Assalamu alaikum. I have a brother who is a Christian and is reconsidering Islam. Being a comparative religious scholar, what would be the most important point to make to this brother so he knows how Islam is superior to Christianity? Talk about the commonalities that are there in Islam and in Christianity. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah illallah, That we worship none but one almighty God. And Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith for its followers to believe in Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was the Messiah translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any main intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Muslims and the Christians, we are going together. But one may ask, then where are the parting of ways? The parting of ways are, there are many Christians who say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity, he said that he was almighty God. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement, not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says, I am God, or where he says, worship me. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, my father is greater than I, Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devil with the spirit of God, Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I with the finger of God, cast out devil, Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, for I seek not my will, but the will of my father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God, he is a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. In fact, if you read it, it's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by himself and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by himself and you are witness to it. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. And he repeated verbatim what was said by Moses, peace be upon him. It is mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29. Shama Israelo, Adna ilahaina adna ikhad. Yero Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. So if we read the Bible, we shall understand that you have to worship only one God and you have to worship him alone without associating partners. Now, if all religions basically teach good, then what's the difference between Islam and the other religions? For example, all religions say that we should not rob. Christianity says that, Hinduism says that and Islam says that. So what's the difference between Islam and the other religions? Islam besides telling you to do good, it shows you a practical way how to achieve that state of goodness. In Islam, we have a system of zakah. Poverty will eradicate from this world. There will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. And after that, if any man robs chopping of the hands, certain people might say chopping of the hands in this 21st century. Islam is a barbaric religion. Islam is a ruthless religion. And people say America it is the most advanced country in the world. Do you know America? It has the highest rate of crime and theft. I am asking the question that if you implement the Islamic Sharia, that there should be a system of zakah. Every rich person who has a saving of more than the sub level of more than 85 grams of gold, he should give 2.5% of his saving every lunar year in charity. And after that, if any man robs chopping of the hands, I am asking the question that will the rate of robbery in America, will it increase, will it remain the same or will it decrease? But naturally it will decrease. You implement the Sharia and you get results. I would like to give you another example. All religions say that a woman should be dressed modestly. Islam says that, Christianity says that and Hinduism says that. 
but islam besides talking about hijab for the woman it shows you a practical way how to achieve that state of goodness all religions they say that you should not rape a woman christianity says that islam says that hinduism says that but islam besides saying that you should not rape a woman it shows you a practical way how to achieve that state of goodness in islam we have a system of hijab that the woman she should be dressed modestly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah nur chapter number 24 verse number 30 Say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. The next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31. Say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty. And display not her beauty except what is ordinary thereof. And tell her to draw her veil over bosoms. And display not her beauty except in front of their husbands their fathers, their sons, and there's a big list of mehrams of close relatives who you cannot marry. There are basically six criteria for hijab that are mentioned in the glorious Quran and in the authentic hadith. The first is the extent for the man and for the woman. For the man, it's from the navel to the knee. For the woman, it is the complete body should be covered. The only parts that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. The remaining five criteria are same for the man and for the woman. The second, the clothes they wear, it should be loose. It should not be tight fitting. It should not reveal the figure. The third is that it should not be translucent or transparent. In Islam, we have a system of hijab. And after that, if any man rapes any woman, capital punishment, death penalty. Certain people might say, death penalty in this 21st century. Islam is a barbaric religion. Islam is a ruthless religion. America, being one of the most advanced countries in the world, it has the highest rate of rape. I am asking the question that if you implement the Islamic Sharia, that every woman she should be dressed modestly and after that if any man rapes any woman capital punishment death penalty I am asking the question that will the rate of rape in America will it increase will it remain the same or will it decrease but naturally it will decrease you implement the Sharia and you get results so Islam besides teaching good it shows you a practical way how to achieve that state of goodness that makes Islam different from the other religions.